So let's look at the rules themselves. Rule number one, power is not what you have, but what your enemy thinks you have. If you can fool your adversaries, whether that's in a legislative bow battle, whether it's a threat of a boycott, no matter what sort of action you're taking, if you imply power and resources, you may fool your enemy into thinking you have more power, more organizational ability than you have. And that can be very powerful in and of itself. Rule number two, never go outside the experience of your people. People aren't comfortable with things that they have no familiarity with. Now, it doesn't mean you aren't constantly training people to become familiar with new tactics, new ways of doing things, but you get people to do things that they are familiar with and they understand and they know. Rule number three, always go outside the experience of your enemy. Keep your enemy always a little off kilter. Make sure your enemy doesn't know exactly how to respond. Increase uncertainty and fear. Make them address issues that are distracting, that they aren't expecting to address, that they might not know how to address. Rule number four, make the enemy live up to their own book of rules. And this is extremely important, and this is straight out of Antonio Gramsci, the Italian communist. Catch your enemy lying and hold him to that, but don't hold yourself to any standards at all whatsoever. This is typical in all the campaigns we see waged by the left today. Make your enemy adhere to their bourgeois standards. That's the way they see it. Chris, do you think we'd have one example of maybe how the left has done this, you know, today, you know, forced, or even the right has done it to the left, you know, forced the other side to live by their own standards? Well, I think we see it in, in a lot of recent campaigns. Uh, anytime any candidate or politician on the right gets a statistic slightly wrong, the attack is immediately made. You're lying. You're exaggerating. On the other hand, we can have uh, uh, someone perhaps even in the White House earn many Pinocchios for <laughs> telling things that aren't right and, oh, he was just uh, making a misstatement. Yeah. They make excuses. So this is typical. Rule number, four, uh, rule number five, ridicule is man's most, Im most potent weapon. If you can turn your enemy into an object of ridicule, there's almost no defense for that. And for any of you who followed the presidential campaign in 2012, you may know what they did to Rick Santorum's name. And that was absolutely potent. It took millions of people on the left working together to make that happen. But when you can make someone a joke, make them a ridiculous figure, that is devastating. Number six, a good tactic is one your people enjoy. Well, duh, of course. If people enjoy what they're doing, they will do it with more vigor and more imagination, and they'll be much more involved in the process. Rule number seven, a tactic that drags on too long becomes a drag. Your people get bored. They don't see any results and it does become counterproductive. That, to some extent, is what happened with the Occupy movement. It just dragged on and on. <clears throat> Nobody saw anything happening, and eventually it just petered out. Rule number eight, keep pressure on. Don't give your adversary a chance to regroup. If you let up, it may give the crisis management team for your opponent a chance to figure out a way to counterattack. So always keep the pressure up. Rule number nine, the threat is usually more terrifying than the thing itself. And this works with the earlier rule to imply power. Adversaries will expend inordinate resources to defend themselves against a threat that you may not even have the power to, to fulfill. 
So make the threats, imply the power, and you can really keep your adversaries off guard. Rule number 10, the major premise for tactics is that the development of operations that will maintain a constant pressure upon the opposition. Now what this means in essence is the left is not in a battle. They're not in an election followed by a legislative battle. They are in constant war. On the right, we see politics like a basketball game. We go sit in the bleachers, we cheer for our team, then we go home back to our families, our communities, our churches and synagogues, and we live our lives. That's not how the left sees it. The left sees this as constant war. Rule number 11, if you push a negative hard enough and deep enough, it will break through to its counter side. Now what they mean by that is you keep pushing and pushing and pushing and eventually you may win sympathy from the public at large or you may push your opponent into overreacting which can earn you sympathy from the public at large. Rule number 12, the price of a successful attack is having a constructive alternative. That is, you have to have a demand, you have to have a solution because you may have your opponent simply cave in. This is especially true in legislative battles or demands for public policy changes. So you need to have a demand so if they cave, you can tell them what you want. Rule number 13, and this is the favorite of the left. We see it in every campaign. We see it on MSNBC regularly. Pick the target, freeze it personalize it, polarize it. They pick their targets on the right and they try to make these people radioactive, hurling the epithet racist at anybody and everybody they want to make these people untouchable. That is their favorite. Thanks so much for watching this video. To watch our latest video, click here. And to make sure you don't miss any future videos, be sure to subscribe.